Hello there and welcome to my guide to the glory of the Dragonflight Hero Achievement. This is the dungeon meta achievement for the Dragonflight expansion. There are 25 achievements here spanning across eight of the brand new Dragonflight dungeons. So this is going to be a long one, but it is a lot of fun and one of the easier dungeon meta achievements apart from one of the achievements, but we'll get to that. But before we jump into the guide, guys, I just want to shout out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mr. GM. If you want to see me streaming Dragonflight, Dragonflight PTR, Wrath Itching Classic and more, I'm over on twitch.tv slash Mr. GM every single day. All right, the glory to the Dragonflight hero achievement. So at this point of recording, we're pretty late into season one of Dragonflight. So these achievements are definitely a lot easier than they were at the start of the expansion. Uh, you could be doing this at season two, season three, or even the next expansion. Uh, either way, uh, this is going to be a guide to all of these achievements and how you do them. So the reward from doing this meta achievement is a snail mount called Shellac. Uh, this is a kind of lava snail, which is very similar to the other lava snails, unfortunately. Not a dragon riding customization or anything like that but it is a new mount to your collection and those snail mounts are just pretty great so if you want to do this achievement for the reward the reward is shellac so before we jump into the achievements as an add-on i really recommend for these achievements and that is instance achievement tracker this is going to really help you out because during these achievements it's going to put little notes in the chat telling you whether you failed the achievement whether you succeeded the achievement whether it's okay to kill the boss super helpful add-on uh, works for pretty much every single one of these achievements so i highly recommend you download instance achievement tracker and I'll leave a link to that below in the description. Right, so let's jump into some of these achievements. These achievements can only be done on Mythic difficulty. I believe you can do them on Mythic Plus, but why would you ever do that? Just do them on Mythic Zero difficulty uh, to make them as easy as they possibly can. So let's start with our first dungeon, and that is the Algathar Academy. Now, the first achievement here is See Me After Class. Now, for this achievement, you have to defeat Veximus without a player absorbing any arcane orbs in the Academy on Mythic difficulty. So for this boss, you basically just want to burst it down as quickly as possible. Uh, when when those orbs spawn during the boss, just avoid them at all costs. Instant Achievement Tracker will tell you if someone has been hit with the orbs. Uh, it was a little buggy when we did it, but essentially, yeah, just burst the boss down as quickly as possible. Avoid the orbs at all costs. Obviously, just kite the boss around. Once the boss is defeated, you should get the achievement See Me After Class. The next achievement is Duck Duck Spruce. This is a fun one. So for this one, you have to defeat the Overgrown Ancient while all party members have the well-fed duckling on their head in the Academy on Mythic Difficulty. So this one is excellent. So basically, Basically, before the fight begins, uh, obviously clear up all the trash in the area uh, and then head over to the little pond in the north part of the boss room. Now you're going to see some little ducklings here, so you need everyone in your party to click the ducklings. Uh, this will give you a slow, this will slow you by 65%, uh, which obviously, you know, just a little bit annoying, but essentially that's all you got to do. Click the ducks and then defeat the boss while slowed with the ducklings on your head. It's pretty funny, it's pretty aesthetically pleasing. Uh, so once the boss is defeated and you've, you know, done it, it's, that's it. You'll get the achievement duck duck spruce the last achievement in the academy is squad goals this is to defeat crawleth after simultaneously activating both goals in the academy on mythic difficulty so this one isn't too difficult at all uh, this is obviously the big bird boss uh, where you have to kind of fire the balls into the goals so what you want to do is kind of take the boss down slowly wait for the phase to come up and then get two of each of the goals and then you'll have one remaining on each side we got two people in the position with the balls at each of the goals uh, and then did a five second countdown using the in-game countdown uh, once that was done we fired the balls off using the extra action button that triggered it and that we were able to kill the boss and get the achievement squad goals now the interesting thing about academy is that you don't have an achievement for the last boss so those are the three achievements for the algathar academy the next dungeon we're going to look at is the azure vaults this is the dungeon of the azure span so there are three achievements here the first one being you must be made of hide so this is to defeat umbra skull without being hit by a polymorph trap or triggering a shriek in the azure vaults on mythic difficulty so this is one of those ones where you have to to do it throughout the entire dungeon you can do this on top of the other achievements as well uh, so for this essentially just don't get hit by any of the traps or any of the whelps around the area so you'll see the whelps in like the first part of the dungeon that have the ring around them do not trigger those that will trigger the shriek which will make it so you fail the achievement in the second part of the dungeon you also see some runes on the floor do not step on these this will trigger the polymorph effect which will also fail the dungeon so the tldr here is essentially just do the dungeon without triggering the whelps or triggering the runes on on the floor. Once you defeat the last boss, this achievement should trigger. As mentioned, Incidents Achievement Tracker will track this as well. You can just keep trying this if you like, and as mentioned, you can do the other achievements while also doing this. The next achievement here is I see what you did here. Yep. 
Yep, puns o'clock. So this one is to defeat Talash Greywing after using Icy Devastator 12 times on an Icy Crystal to create a very Icy Crystal in the Azure Vaults on Mythic Difficulty. So this one is one of the easier ones. Uh, essentially what you got to do here is bring the boss over to the Icy Crystal. You'll see it in the room just on the side. Just let the boss do its ability a couple times here. Obviously continue to do the mechanics, but essentially you want it to do Icy Devastator a couple times. I think it ticks for four, so it's like three or so times. Uh, but yeah, we just kind of had the boss here and just let it do its abilities until the Icy Crystal became the very Icy Crystal and then we defeated the boss. Not too difficult when you have a higher gear level and stuff like that. It just makes all these achievements a hell of a lot easier. Uh, but obviously do avoid the mechanics here because you will obviously still die to some of them. The final achievement in the Azure Vaults is the Cracked Crystal. So for this one, you have to defeat Umbra Skull after smashing Glimmering Geodes with Dragon Strike and destroying nine Geode Chunks in Azure Vaults on Mythic Difficulty. This is one for the tank. So in the room, there are three purple Geodes. Essentially what you want here is the tank to bring the boss over to them and let the boss do Dragon Strike. Once it hits the Geode, the Geodes will spawn and three Chunks will spawn. You just got to DPS these down very, very easy. Obviously, you could just got to do this three times to the Geodes around the room and once that's done, you'll get the achievement and obviously if you're doing you must be made of hide you'll get both achievements at the same time uh, when you defeat the last boss in the azure vaults the next dungeon we're going to head to is the Bracken Hyde Hollow, another dungeon of the Azure Span. There are three achievements in this dungeon, and the first one is Growl Bossify. So for this achievement, you have to defeat Hackclaw's Warband after freeing Chief Southpaw, equipping her with a spear and a shield, and making sure she survives in the Bracken Hyde Hollow. So for this achievement, I found it a lot easier to put world markers down. So you want to put three world markers down. You want to put one at the back of the room where the cage is, one on the right-hand side, and one on the left-hand side for the sword and the spear. So once once the encounter begins, you'll be able to click the cage at the back of the room to release Chief Southpaw. Chief Southpaw is just going to be really scared and running around at this point. So what you then want to do is head over to the spear rack, click the spear and a new extra action button will appear uh, and then run over to Chief Southpaw and click the extra action button to give her the spear. After that, you want to head over to the other side of the room and pick up the shield. Uh, same process again, extra action button will spawn. You run over to Chief Southpaw click the shield and she will now uh, be ready to fight the bosses. And obviously, as mentioned, you do not want her to die. So it's probably worth putting a mark on her, uh, making sure she does not die. Uh, then you just do the boss as you normally would. And once the boss is defeated, you will get the achievement Growl Bossify. The next achievement in the Bracken Eyed Hollow is All Bark, All Bite. This is to defeat Tree Mouth after every player has been consumed at least once in the Bracken Hyde Hollow. So this achievement is a lot of fun. Uh, so essentially Tree Mouth is a big tree with a big mouth and what they do during the fight is consume players. Now once this ability does come up you just want to kind of get consumed by it. Once everyone has been consumed at least once you'll be able to just kill the boss and get the achievement All Bark, All Bite. Very easy achievement. Basically just get hit with the consume ability and uh, yeah they you go that's all you got to do for that one and the final achievement in the Brackenite hollow is called so you can kill this in a way that matters this is to defeat decay rock wrath eye after finding and planting three resilient mushrooms then destroying them with decay strike in the Brackenite hollow so this achievement is a little bit annoying and a little bit difficult but it is relatively doable after a couple of times here so around the top of the room before the encounter you're going to see a kind of smog this will kill you if you stand in it but around the smog on the kind of edge of the platform uh, are mushrooms now, before the encounter begins, these are not interactable. So what you want to do here before you start the encounter is put world markers on these mushrooms and get three players to run up there, shield up there. There's a very, very small area you can stand before the encounter where you won't get hit with the death smog. You want to stand there. Uh, once everyone is in position next to all of the mushrooms, you want to start the encounter. Once the encounter begins, the players will be able to click the mushrooms. And what you want to do there is jump down and plant the mushrooms. This is where you want the tank to position the boss where you've planted the mushrooms and do the decay strike which will destroy the mushrooms now you can put another world marker down as well for everyone to plant the mushrooms in the same spot just to make this a lot easier once all three mushrooms have been destroyed you could just kill the boss as usual and that will give the achievement this took a few times for us it's a little bit annoying but once you kind of got it down you understand what's going on it's a relatively easy achievement the next dungeon we're going to take a look at is the Halls of Infusion. Now the first achievement here is Toxicity Strike Team. So for this achievement you have to defeat the Toxic Swag Mother after purging the water intakes in the Halls of Infusion. So for this one, after you defeat the first boss, there are no achievements for the first boss, uh, there'll be a pathway towards the left. What you want to do here is take out the ads. There'll be a machine with a button, you just press the button and this will spawn the Toxic Swag Mother. And then you just defeat that NPC and get the achievement. Yeah, relatively easy. 
The next achievement is Hungry Hungry Hornswog. I absolutely hate this achievement. So this is to defeat the gulping Goliath after forcing it to become hangry and devour 10 curious swaglets in the Halls of Infusion. So this achievement sucked. We did not have a good time with this at all. I don't know if it was bugged. I don't know if it was just super hard. Essentially what you want to do here is when they cast Overpowering Croak, it's going to spawn some curious swaglets. Now what you want to do with them is just stun them and keep them in one position and get as many as you can. Uh, the achievement says 10. We just had an absolute ton of them by the end because we just weren't sure if it was going to work. So you just want to stack them up here. Obviously having a Death Knight will help a lot. So you can do a mass grip or something like that. Um, but yeah, once you have enough of these curious swaglets, you want the boss to do the gulp ability on them. And this should gulp them down. And this should gulp them down and hopefully give you the criteria to defeat the boss. Uh, again, Instance Achievement Tracker is such a good add-on for this one. So if you have that installed, definitely use that. And that'll let you know that there has been enough curious swaglets consumed and you, then you can defeat the boss and get the achievement. Our last achievement in the Halls of Infusion is an achievement called Go With The Flow. Uh, for this one, you have to defeat the Primal Tsunami after slaying three flow control units in the Halls of Infusion. So this one is relatively easy. You just want to do the boss as you normally would. When the boss does the intermission, the cast away ability, this is where you want to turn around and defeat a new NPC called the flow control unit. This is relatively easy to do. They just want everyone to turn around once they get to this phase. Once the NPCs are defeated, you just run and do the intermission phase and defeat the boss as you normally would. And that will give you the achievement go with the flow. The next dungeon we're going to take a look at is Neltheris, and the first achievement is Knowledge is Preserved. For this achievement, you have to defeat Chargath while burning less than 15 books in Neltheris on Mythic difficulty. Now, this is definitely one of the easiest achievements on this list. For this, you just want to stack on the stairs at the entrance of the boss room. Everybody stack there, defeat the boss as quickly as possible. Shouldn't burn any books being there, so yeah, just face the boss uh, outside the room towards the stairs and kill the boss, and that will give you the achievement Knowledge Knowledge is preserved. The next achievement in Neltheris is Liquid Hot Magma. This is another one that is super easy. So for this, you need to defeat Magma Tusk after it has been mutated with Draconic Tintula in Neltheris on Mythic Difficulty. So as you enter the room, you'll see a vial on a table. You need everybody in your group to pick up one of those. Uh, this will give you a new extra action button. And before the encounter begins, uh, before you've pulled the boss, you want everyone to throw the potion. Once the boss has five stacks of the Magma Tentacle buff, you can just start the boss and defeat it as normal and that will give the achievement Liquid Hot Magma. The final achievement in Neltheris is ready for raiding 8. So for this one, you need to defeat Forge Master Gorek without being struck by Forge Storm, Forge Fire, Blazing Eruptions, and another player's Blazing Aegis, or the final slam of Heated Swings in Neltheris. So this is a personal achievement, so you may have already got this before if you have been doing the dungeon, uh, but for this, basically, just avoid absolutely everything everything. You do not want to get hit by any ability in this fight. Uh, so as mentioned, this is a personal achievement, so you might get it, but someone else might not get it. So you can just obviously go back and reset the dungeon if you'd like to do that. But really for this, you just want to get the boss down as quickly as possible while avoiding every single mechanic. The next dungeon we're going to look at is the Knockhud Offensive. So there's nothing on the first boss here in the Knockhud Offensive, but there is something on the second boss, the Raging Tempest. Uh, this achievement is called What Are the Chances? So for this, you need to defeat the Raging Tempest after to striking a single player with five lightning strikes simultaneously and defeating a storm elemental in the knockout offensive. So essentially for this achievement during the fight, you're gonna have these massive rings around you. Uh, so what you wanna do is get one player hit by all of them. I recommend the tank at this point. So have the tank obviously in the middle of the room here. Uh, everyone kind of gather around and make sure your ring overlaps with everybody else's ring. And hopefully that will hit the tank with five lightning strikes. Once that's done, if you've successfully done that, the ad will spawn, which is the storm elemental. Simply just defeat the storm elemental and then the boss and that'll be the achievement what are the chances the next achievement is weapons of the murakai so this is to defeat terra and muruk while holding the spear the axe and the bow in the knock her defensive so for this you need to kind of clear the area around the bosses and there'll be certain caves which will contain a weapon uh, you have a spear an axe and of course a bow uh, so pretty much you just need to get a player in your party to pick these up uh, each one has kind of a, a detrimental effect the spear causes players to get 20 more damage. Uh, the axe reduces movement speed and the bow reduces incoming healing. But yeah, essentially because you have such a higher item level now, it should be relatively easy. So once all players have that, you just want to fight the boss as you normally would. Uh, make sure nobody dies during this fight as well, because I believe if you die, it does cancel the achievement. Once everyone is alive and still has those buffs, that will give the achievement weapons of the Murakai. 
The next achievement in the Knock HUD offensive is Knock HUD Deed Goes Unnoticed. This is a defeat Balakar Khan after healing Onara to full health in the Knock HUD offensive. So this is a relatively easy achievement once again. You'll see Onara there during the boss fight. Uh, essentially what you gotta do here is, is get your healer or get anyone who can heal to heal Onara up to full health uh, during the fight. You might have to do this twice, but once it's done, you'll see Onara will do an animation uh, and then you just defeat the boss as normal once that is done. So it's a relatively easy achievement. Uh, anyone that can heal should heal uh, and then yeah just kill the boss as you normally would. The last achievement here is actually a super interesting one. Uh, you can do this by yourself. You don't need the bosses to be defeated or anything like that. You can just go around and do this uh, as and when you like. This is called Ohana Incubation. This is to deliver eight warm Ohana eggs to Ohana Keeper Taruk uh, in a single visit to the Knockout Offensive. Now shout out to Lindenus on Wowhead for the map here. So what you gotta do here is just fly around the map and pick up the eggs. Uh, just fly around on your dragon riding mount, pick up the eggs and then take the eggs back to the egg basket. Uh, so once you've done this eight times, this will trigger the achievement. There are way more than eight eggs on the map. So yeah, just fly around and look for the eggs using the map there. So yeah, that's pretty much that achievement. As mentioned, you could do that uh, whenever you like. You could do it right now. You don't need a group or anything like that. Uh, just fly around, deliver the eggs and get the achievement in the knockout offensive. The next dungeon we're going to head to is the Ruby Life Pools. Now you're going to have to do these achievements in two runs, unless you're an absolute god gamer, but I would definitely recommend doing this in two runs. So the first run of this dungeon, you want to do the achievement, Are You My Broodmother? So for this, it says you have to defeat Cryraka and Eric Hart Stormfane after chilling, searing, tempering, and keeping alive the nascent Ruby Egg in the Ruby Life Pools on Mythic Difficulty. So for this. This is going to be a really interesting one. Again, a lot easier with a higher item level uh, and skilled players here. So what you want to do at the start of the dungeon, just after the big rocky first mob, uh, you want to head over to the pillars. Behind the pillar is an egg. Now here, you want to make a decision who carries the egg. This person cannot die throughout the entire dungeon. So if you want to do it, you can, or you can get the tank or healer or anyone you like uh, to pick up this egg. For this egg, you'll see it on your back. Now what you want to do here is get hit by by different mechanics by different bosses. So the first boss, the egg carrier, must get hit by hail bombs during the fight. Uh, this is just the swirlies during the fight. Once you get hit by that, you'll see that the egg now has a kind of white swirly around it. Obviously then you will just want to head upstairs, clear all the trash, obviously still staying alive, and then you want to get to the second boss of the ruby life pools. Now during this boss fight, the egg carrier must get hit with the swirly when the ritual of blaze binding is being cast. So once you stand in there, that will cause the egg to become a bit fiery, but the egg will change appearance. Once that's done, you can defeat the boss as normal while still staying alive, of course. Then you want to head to the last boss, the big dragon and the troll here. For this one, you just want to get hit by the fire breath, which is cast by the dragon. Once you've done that, that should hopefully complete the achievement criteria and you defeat the boss as normal. It's worth noting as well, do not mount because that will drop the egg and fail the achievement and you have to start again. So yeah, this is uh, a pretty interesting one as mentioned, definitely worth doing just a run in itself for this achievement. Uh, once you've done that achievement, you can now work on the other two achievements. So let's talk about the other two achievements. So once you've reset the dungeon, you want to go back in and do the achievement Dragon Kill Points. This is to defeat Meldrusa after defeating 40 of her chambers infused whelps uh, in the Ruby Life Pools. Pretty easy here. Uh, what you want to do is spawn many whelps and handle them. Yeah, you can run into the eggs. You, you can wait for her to spawn a ton of whelps, but essentially, yeah, you just want to kill as many whelps as possible. You want to kill 40 whelps during this fight. Uh, yeah, pretty easy. Run into the eggs. Once you hit 40, instance achievement tracker should let you know uh, how many you've defeated, and then you just defeat the boss as normal, and you'll get the achievement Dragon Kill Points. The last achievement in the Ruby Life Pools is the achievement Does Steam Do Fire Damage? This is to defeat Kokaya Blazehoof after heating up four life pools with Molten Boulder in the Ruby Life Pools. So this one is pretty darn annoying. Uh, it's going to take a little bit. It's going to take some precision. It's, it's definitely not the easiest achievement just for positioning wise. So what you want to do here is obviously clear all of the trash before the boss and send the boss on a little adventure around the Ruby Life Pools. So you see the different pools around the map. You basically just want to kite the boss over to them and get the boss to do the meteor attack into the life pool. Now this is going to get super messy and you probably will die a couple times trying this, uh, but essentially what you want to do is once the pool is steaming and it's a very obvious animation, that is when you move on to the next pool. Uh, the best plan of actually
action here is really just get everyone to kind of stack on the pools and just heal as much as possible because the fire does get pretty messy as mentioned and it gets really really annoying but yeah you essentially just want to kind of stack up and get your tank to position themselves near the pool to get the big boulder to hit the life pool uh, i recommend keep doing the mechanics kill the ads and things like that otherwise it's going to get super crazy but yeah you could take your time with this as well um but yeah it's just a lot of healing and a lot of annoying precision but once you've done it once all the life pools are steam you can defeat the boss as normal and get the achievement and finally our final dungeon is alderman legacy of tear now i did not leave the best for last because these are pretty darn annoying so there's three achievements in the alderman legacy of tear and the first one is it's a trog eat trog world this is to defeat bromash while 10 or more stone vault trogs are still alive in alderman this is luckily one of the easy ones so for this essentially what you want to do is just let the boss spawn as many ads as possible uh, once you see that there are 10 spawned you just want to defeat the boss as normal just make sure you keep doing the mechanics as well because you may actually die uh, try not to do any aoe abilities or cleave or anything like that in case you do accidentally kill any of them but once you're pretty confident on 10 or more trogs being spawned uh, just defeat the boss the next achievement is no, you're stunning. For this, you need to defeat Sentinel Talandris after simultaneously stunning both Sentinel Talandris and all party members in Alderman. So this was such a headache and takes a little bit of time and a little bit of coordination. So throughout the fight, you'll see that the boss spawns these circles around players. You just want to place these around the room. You want to place as many of these as possible, but not break them uh, due to the fact that when you walk into them, they do stun you. So essentially what you want to do here is stun the boss and everybody else in the party at the exact same time so you can get the criteria for the achievement. The only problem here is that the boss will sometimes have the buff Titanic Empowerment. While they have Titanic Empowerment on, you do not want to attempt this because they will not get stunned by the traps. Once that is dropped off, they will get a new buff with two stacks which prevent the next stun effect. What you want to do here is get the boss to run into two of the traps and this will remove the buff. Now you've got to be quick here because they will cast Titanic Empowerment once again uh, once their energy has has reached 100. So at this point you want to make sure there's enough traps for everyone in the party and the boss. What we did here was do a five second countdown. When the countdown hit zero, we all jumped into a trap. The boss was stunned for a couple seconds along with everybody else, and then we defeated the boss as normal. Again, takes a little bit of coordination here. It's a little bit annoying. It's trial and error. You probably won't get it the first time, but it's easily done once you understand the kind of timing of the fight. And finally, the final achievement in Alderman and the final achievement of the glory of the Dragonflight hero is like sands through the hourglass. This is to defeat Chrono Lord Deos after catching every Eternity Orb as it falls to the ground in Alderman. This achievement sucks. This was the worst meta achievement I think I've ever done in my entire life. And we did it after we had a lot of gear from season one. I don't know how difficult this would have been uh, at the very start of the season. So how is this done? So the achievement is essentially to catch falling stars from the boss. You'll see them come down uh, pretty soon after the boss is engaged. What you want to do here is once you see a swirly on the floor, you want someone to run into it and catch the orb. These orbs must not hit the ground. If they hit the ground, the achievement has been failed. What we did here was basically just keep bashing our heads over and over and, and wait for Lust. Lust really helped here and every single cooldown we had helped here as well. You want to kill this boss as quickly as possible. The faster the boss goes down, the less orbs that will spawn and the less chance you will fail the achievement. Again, instance achievement tracker is absolutely incredible here as an add-on, so I'd highly recommend using that for this. Uh, but what we did, yeah, we just killed the boss as quickly as possible while catching all of the orbs. There's no cheat codes for this. There's no really nothing. It just sucks. It is a really, really bad achievement. I absolutely despise it. I wish they removed it from the meta, but it is doable and it, and we did it. And yeah, it's the worst. I, I, I would definitely save that as the last achievement. So yeah, there you go. That is a full guide to all 25 achievements for the glory of the Dragonflight hero. Hopefully this helped. Hopefully you got your shellac mount and had a good time doing it. I had a really good time. We did it on stream uh, with viewers and we got it all done pretty much in a couple of hours. Uh, some are definitely easier than others for sure. And But overall, a really good time and one of the easier meta achievements to get apart from that last one from Alderman. So yeah, thank you very much for watching guys. Let me know down below what you think of this meta achievement. I definitely think the reward could be 
been better, but I do like a lot of these achievements. I thought they were great, to be honest. So please leave a like on this video, guys, if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't. If you want to support me outside of YouTube, I have a Patreon and Twitter at MrGMYT. Uh, I also have a Discord channel as well. And as mentioned, I am streaming on Twitch.tv slash MrGM. So if you want to see me streaming World of Warcraft, Dragonflight, Dragonflight PTR, Wrath of Classic, any sort of World of Warcraft, I'm over on Twitch.tv slash MrGM every single day. And with that, guys, I'll see you next time.